Okay, uh, so I continue what uh, Professor Sada introduced, the autofluorescence. And then actually, uh, I like autofluorescence, and I like uh, actually uh, Vass already introduced. I'm a multi-imaging supporter. So I think it's uh, the combine all the information that we can get from all the imaging modalities is very useful to do a right diagnosis. And uh, speaking about uh, you know, autofluorescence, we know that the most important fluorophore in the eye is the lipofuscin that is, content, is uh, in the RPE cells. And uh, the lipofuscin is actually be visible in, uh, if you use a, 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 you know, a, a autofluorescence uh, uh, microscope, and these are the granules uh, presence in, uh, of lipofuscin in the RPE. Now, one of the things that we know is that uh, more we grow, more we glow, because in fact, uh, you know, the young uh, subjects has less lipofuscin, even if they started to build up at, uh, when we are six months old, and we actually see an increasing with age. And uh, as you see in this flat mountain of RPE cells uh, by Charlotte Remy. So lipofuscin is it's related to the uh, shedding of the disc of the photoreceptor and, and the incomplete digestion is creating uh, the lipofuscin, sorry. And, uh, but the other possibility to create uh, you know, lipofuscin is a melanolipofuscin that it's uh, coming from the degradation of the uh, melanin granules. Now, when we speak right now about uh, uh, autofluorescence, we can actually see a series of instruments that can get an autofluorescent image. And you cannot probably uh, see that there is a, I put a blue background and a green background and a, a you know, pink background. And uh, these are the three different type of uh, autofluorescence that you can get. The blue autofluorescence, it's uh, uh, done with the spectralis, with the NIDIC, and with the ADON. Then we have uh, the green autofluorescence that is obtained with the Optos and all the other fundus camera. Now, why we cannot get uh, a blue autofluorescence with the other instruments and just with all these uh, three? It's related to the fact that uh, one of the biggest fluorophore in the eye, particularly if we excite with a blue light, is the lens. And more, you know, the, the, the lens is uh, yellow, more, uh, you know, fluorescence it is. And so if we flash all the lights in and we got all the light that comes from the, the eye, we will not see the fundus because the main uh, fluorophore is coming from the lens. So because of that, if we want to get a blue autofluorescent, we need to have or an IOL or a confocal aperture. And this is why you see it's not related to the scanning laser, uh, but just to the confocality. And the uh, ADON is a slit scanning uh, confocal uh, LEDs uh, instrument. And uh, the difference is that instead of having a pinhole, you have a, a slit lamp. And the scanning laser is also from Optos, but uh, it, since it's not confocal, it's not able to get a blue autofluorescence. And what you get is a green autofluorescence. And here, just to show you know, the different uh, type of fluorescence that you see. And uh, the big difference, once you get, it's uh, the dark spot in the center of the uh, fovea. And the center of the fovea is due to the yellow pigment, that it's uh, the lutein or uh, uh, pigment, or the macular pigment, and you, so it's a dark spot. And you move, more you move to a, a green light, autofluorescent, you see that uh, it will disappear. Now, why? Because I said, you know, you, if you have uh, a, a macular pigment, it's yellow, and you uh, use the blue light, it's absorbed. And of course, you can actually have uh, uh, you know, the blue and green taken with the uh, same instrument with uh, spectralis, and you see the dark spot here that is not visible here. And uh, uh, of course, if you uh, take uh, you know, also a patient with a retinal pigment material detachment, the green and the blue, again, differ from the uh, spot 
there. Why blue is important in clinical practice? You know, you heard about the fact that if you have a, you know, a geographic atrophy and you want to see if the fovea is involved or not, because it's a dark like the surrounding area, you probably have to combine. But in a, and you have actually also infrared in, in the Aidon, so you can actually use it for that. But the most interesting part is that when you have a, you know, a, a blue light, you actually see the macro pigment. And there are a series of uh, diseases where you actually, uh, it's important to detect if we have a macro pigment or if uh, you know, the macro pigment is, dis is displaced. For example, here you see uh, an old uh, picture that I have uh, from uh, you know, the same patient taken with the Heidelberg and the two fundus camera. And these are green and these are blue. And you see that uh, you actually see very well the cyst just because uh, the macro pigment is displaced. And so you don't see any more of a stop uh, you know, from, from the uh, um, uh, macro pigment, but you see the fluorescence that comes from the RPE. Here, since you don't have a mask of the uh, macro pigment, you're not able to detect the difference in uh, you know, the presence of the cyst. And the same is, uh, for example, for uh, pseudo hole or uh, lamellar hole. You know, the fact that uh, sometimes also OCT is not able to detect. If you have a lamellar hole, you, have, you, know, you don't have any more some tissue, and the tissue has also the macro pigment. So you see, if you see a fluorescent, you have to say that is, that is a lamellar hole. If you still have you know, a, a, the boundaries of, uh, of the OCTs looks like you know, a, 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 hole, a lamellar hole, but they still have the dark spot in autofluorescence, then it's a pseudo hole. So it's very useful for that. Here another example of a two uh, different wavelengths. And you see the dark spot and the uh, absence of dark spot. And here another one with the cyst visible here and not here. Now, the other thing I said is the confocal aperture. And the confocal aperture allowed you to see uh, the layer that you are interested in and you, re, you, you, know, you don't collect the lights that comes from the surrounding uh, area. And that, again, it's important. If you want to take out you know, the fluorescence that comes from the lens. And here in an, in another example where we actually see the confocal and uh, where you look at uh, you know, this pigment, this is a melanolipofaskin, you see, but it's a, a different level comparing with the increased fluorescence in this vitelliform lesion, you see if you take a, a normal uh, not confocal, you will not see. It's everything at the same uh, fluorescent. The other advantage is that you can go through such a, a small pupil and get a color, an infrared, and an autofluorescent. And you see, you actually, uh, you have to remember that it's only one shot. Is not a mean of images. And in fact, for example, and if you explode the images, you actually see very well the details. But remember, it's a 60 degrees where you can go and very, uh, you know, out uh, to 20, 30 degrees. Now, this is the same patient taken with the Heidelberg, and you see it's a mean images. And here is uh, the same with Adon. But what about if we take uh, one image of uh, Heidelberg? This is the single image. And you see that uh, due to the fact that it's a more confocal, you lose light. So you need to have uh, a, you know, a, a series of images to uh, average to get uh, a decent image. Now we can go through some cases. Here another atrophy where you actually probably see the choroidal vessel over here with uh, uh, you know, different type of uh, fluorophores. Here it's a central serous retinopathy. A, uh, another one with uh, some uh, gravitational uh, um, things. Here it's a patient with, uh, uh, treated with uh, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, this is a Stargard patient, and you see very well. Again, it's a 60 degrees, can go through a small pupil, and 
uh, the interesting things is that there's one shot. And uh, vitelliform lesion, you know, best uh, lesion is a, a, a Stargard patient with uh, atrophic changes. And uh, another Stargard, a retinitis pigmentosa. So in conclusion, the big advantage of the Aiden is a white color. It's not a uh, false color, it's not uh, multicolor, it's, uh, it's really a white color. Then you have uh, the fact that it's, uh, you can get uh, an infrared image, very useful. You have to get used, but uh, you, you, you can actually use uh, uh, in many times. And then uh, uh, you have the blue autofluorescence that uh, in a clinical practice, I think, uh, is very useful to do a series of differential diagnoses. Thank you.